Okay, everybody. Uh, my name's Howard Eels. I'm the manager of Midlands Boat Station uh, up in Birmingham. And the guy who's sharing the screen with me is Tom Webster, who is the assistant head of insure boating, who is going to present on being a water sports instructor in the industry, um, uh, which I'll let him get on with in a minute. The presentation's 40 minutes, Tom. About that, yeah. About 40 minutes, and then we'll allow some time for uh, questions to Tom straight after. Now, if you wish to make any questions while the presentation's ongoing, please use the chat box. And if appropriate, I will uh, ask Tom to stop so he can answer the question. Or we may wait to the end till those questions to ask Tom those questions. So, uh, Tom. Uh, Bean is uh, quite a good colleague of mine. We met on a coach assessor's course at uh, UKSA. Um, coach uh, uh, Tom has been working in the industry probably a bit longer than me, I think, Tom. Um, and uh, he's got a vast amount of experience. So over to you, Tom. Uh, 19 oh, you cut out there, Howard. Do you want me to go? Yeah, go. Uh, okay. Hello, everyone. I'm a sports instructor, which is essentially unpinning every role I've ever done in my life ever since I've left school. So I am a water sports instructor by trade, as is anyone that works uh, with the tuition of, of boats on the water. Wrong button. Brilliant. So what we're going to cover tonight a little bit. Okay, firstly, the, the main sort of thing I've been asked to sort of talk about is my story, my my route through the, the industry, uh, where I've been, what I've done and the journey that I've been on that has taken me from qualifying as an instructor when I was 16 to the job I do now, which is the assistant head of, of inshore boating. So my story, we're going to have a look at gaining qualifications and what qualifications I've gained um, and how to go about doing that and the process you need to go through to gain qualifications across the industry. Uh, key skills that you need as an instructor um, that you will need to develop and a lot of them you will already have. Um, but as an instructor, those key skills that we use to um, to deliver what we deliver across the water sports range, depending whatever sport that may be. Um, Keeping current as well is, is how we how we keep ourselves fresh and how what we have to do to make sure that we develop once we're qualified. It's not all about getting the certificate. It's about developing yourself once you've got the certificate and um, improving yourself and learning and moving forward all the time. So without further ado, there's me, uh, my story. So this picture is a bit of a highlight of uh, my career is uh, when I when I got to go to the London boat shows um, and I worked in the demo pool for the company I was working for at the time, which I'll come to. Um, and that is a Hobie Mirage Drive surfboard that I'm demonstrating there, um, which is a surfboard with handlebars and you use the brake levers to steer it and you have pedals to push up and down and it fires you around. And uh, I was sent going off around the pool with that and a sea bob, which is a jet drive um, underwater machine that you can you drag you around. So that was my job for a week was to to do that. Um, but my story, firstly, that's me, Tom Webster. I'm 38 years old and I started in this game when I was uh, 16. So, you know, I've been, I've been going some time. I'm from Cambridge originally, so I'm not from the coast, which is a lot of surprises a lot of people when they ask you if you're a water sports instructor, which beach did you grow up on? Um, no, I was in the middle of the field in Cambridgeshire. Um, I love all things water. So my, my career has been built around me, my love and passion for water. Um, I really don't like new potatoes. Um, it's quite a strange one, but new potatoes are not my favourite thing at all. Career length is 22 years. And as I said, my current job is assistant head of inshore boating. So my story, my qualifications, I meant, meant, sort of mentioned what, what I've gained as we go. So way back in 1997, I gained my powerboat and safety boat certificates and I was sailing as well, gaining my competency of sailing certificates. In 1999, I uh, became a dinghy instructor, and that's eight years after I first stepped into a sailing boat. Um, as I went on through my career, and that's where my career really started was 1999. Um, and then I 
picked up for 2001 was I started developing my kayaking qualifications uh, had a quite a bit of experience but it was time to use those in a work capacity 2004 I started to move into the more senior runs of the um the qualification level which is the OAA senior dinghy instructor which allows you to oversee things um, and support instructors and mentor instructors but we'll get more onto this uh, 2004 was windsurfing instructor and powerboat instructor and then moving on into the kayak coach uh, canoe coach and then you know that took me into the racing world which is the racing like level two race coach for for marathon uh, paddle sports racing um, and in 2012 I, I was fortunate to meet our lovely host tonight Howard on uh, when I became a coach assessor which was kind of the, one of the pinnacle uh, qualifications of my career and one I'd been working to for a long time and one that took a lot of work to reach but was well worth it and we'll have a little look at that as we go so for me um this is where it all started for me um a lot of people come from either background have an opportunity either through their sailing uh, uh through their family sorry to go sailing um some like yourselves get to get to attend the wonderful world that is sea cadets where we have access to uh boats and craft and we we can build skill level and things like that um for me um i went to a school where they really wanted me to play football turns out i'm not very good at football um, I was quite bad at it, so I was steered in the direction of the wonderful Outdoor Pursuits Department at Kim Bolton School, um, where I could take up sailing. Um, I could do sailing instead of normal sports, sailing, canoeing, windsurfing, and through that I started to develop. Now, whilst I was at this school, obviously the competency levels were going on, but this gave me my foothold in the career, in, in my career, which was becoming a dinghy instructor. And as you can see here, this, these are all the things that I got into there. And I'll have a little look at some of those weirder, weirder titles there as we go. Um, but the sailing is an obvious one. Um, I am a sailor at heart. I have been sailing longer than anything else. Windsurfing is a passion that I picked up while I was there and is still, still with me today. Canoeing, uh, paddling, paddle sports across the range, whether that be kayak, canoe, river journeys, white water, flat water racing. Um, again, that's something I picked up there. Power boating. Now, power boating is something I very much enjoy. Uh, very much enjoyed going out but my qualification set has always been in support of running everything else um, so to be a ding instructor I needed to be a powerboat driver uh, to be a windsurf instructor I need to be a powerboat driver um, and it's been part of part of my career to develop those qualifications and the instructor side of it came alongside driving a powerboat as an instructor in other things um, the devices to Westminster, I'll come to a bit later, that's a large canoe race and something I took part in when I was at the uh, at, at, at the school we used to race in this huge international event, uh, 125 mile canoe race. Um, and that got me a real passion into part of my, my, my life now, um, as, I, as you'll find out, is uh, very much about, uh, about, about that sort of racing side of, of, of paddling. Um, and then we have the cadet side at the school. We had a cadet, cadet contingent and through the Navy, I got to uh, sail and develop uh, my sailing through there and sort of the more horizon broadening um, and the sort of, you know, more nitty gritty of becoming a real person uh, really was taught to me through through cadets. So I was very fortunate to to receive that. So these are some places that I've worked, um, which we're going to go into and have a little look at the different places and explain where where I got some qualifications. Um, so quite a range of places. Then the reason I've put this slide up is mainly because it's a very vast array of industry sectors. Um, we've got uh, local authority centres there um, in Grafham and Cowshot who are run by local government, the councils, who are there for to provide a provision to primary school children predominantly, but also run courses for the local communities and, and residential trips for people further afield. Um, Rockley is a commercial version of that, um, so they, they do do school trips, uh, but they also do a lot of commercial water sports training, be that instructor training, be that um, uh, you know, sailing courses for anyone that wants to come off the street, beach hire things, um, family holidays, that kind of thing. Sunsail was very much a, a holiday company, a bit like your Mark Warners, your Nilsons today, if you know a bit about it. Um, Kim Bolton School actually worked there for a good solid nearly 10 years, really. I was there um, work, working. I got asked to go back and work there for a bit, and uh, I was very fortunate to do so. Um, so Kim Bolton School I was, a, was an employer as well as where, where I got to go to school. And um, the Marine Society and Sea Cadets, which is where my career has brought me to, and very I, happy I am to be here too. Um, so having a little look at those real quickly. Graf and Water, and the reason I'm looking at these individuals is just to sort of have a little look at the differences between them. Graf and Water is an inland lake in the, in the, in the Cambridgeshire countryside um, where multi-activity groups, school groups, RYA sailing courses, um, safety boat duties, 
Um, corporate team building events and uh, sort of maintenance activities really were the core of my job there. And this was my entry level job into the industry. I'd done a little bit working when I was at school teaching the younger year groups who were coming in through the system. Um, and I got to start working teaching those initially at after school clubs. But this was my real first taste of work um, and where I discovered that in the industry, it is hard work. You do have to work hard, but it is also a very fun job. And that really kind of enticed me into it. I must admit, I was at a bit of a uh, loss when it came to leaving school. I didn't really know which direction I want to go in. The military was an option. The uh, various other opportunities were there, but this was one I, I, I jumped into. And it was um, it was a place that I, I really started to learn how to be an instructor. It changed me from being a bit of a, a silly muck around kind of person to somewhere I was taught professionalism is important. How I conduct myself at work is important. And as such, when I was there, this started my development. I entered the industry with just a dinghy instructor ticket. That's all I had, um, this, uh, the sailing instructor certificate. Um, when, I, when I came to Graphim, I started to develop that. So I started to develop my um, skill sets in, you know, more, more sort of, you know, less racy, but more, more kind of general purpose kayaking, more learning to roll a boat, handle a boat that, you know, you can't do in race boats. So the, that was a real sort of start to me there um, about my, my career. It was a very important place. And I did two summer seasons there. Now, when you get into the industry, it's very enticing because you go and work in the sunshine in the summer. Um, when I started, it, you had sessional work, which is where you are paid per time you go to work, almost zero hour contract. Um, seasonal was where you were contracted for the summer season so march to october you worked full time in that season um you know doing working at least five days a week sometimes six and you would be rotated on each day you'd either be on the water with a group or you'd be doing maintenance so this was my first real kind of taste of, of a working life and i did two seasons there when i was in the winter between the seasons, it was a case of make a decision. Do I want to go to the ski slopes, which was very tempting, or do I want to earn a bit of money and just get a job? And I had various off season jobs, which were about uh, you know, anything I could do to earn money. So I worked as a trolley boy at Tesco's. I pushed trolleys around the car park. Um, I worked in a place, a dairy crest, which was a place where you get all the bottled bottles of milk. Um, they get filled with milk and they get put in the back of a lorry. That's where I did that. I put flat pack furniture in flat pack boxes and uh, the, my favorite one though was I was working on a farm for a bit as well which uh, which uh, allowed me to drive big machinery and play around in tractors so that was that was also good fun now um so between the seasons that's what I did and Grafham I was there for two years after that um after I, I sort of worked at Grafham for a couple of years I thought this is a career for me I quite like this now this career here and we'll look at the op opportunities you get uh, when you do this when you do when you do uh, work in this industry, you do have the opportunity to go abroad uh, and work in many, many locations around the world. And I was very fortunate in that I went to work out in Turkey, which was a major water sports destination at the time in 2003. Um, and I got to work at a beautiful place in Turkey uh, near a town called Dacha, uh, called Pirelli Kosk, um, which was a wonderful, wonderful kind of uh, uh, beautiful laid out sort of classic uh, village type hotel, I'd call it. Um, very much like a fairy castle everywhere, really picturesque. And I worked on the Mediterranean Sea uh, off a beach and lived lived on a yacht every day. And uh, every day my yacht would go out and I, it would come back and I'd sleep on it um, each night. So that was uh, that was a real privilege to work there. And this was a water sports holidays company. So a very different type of job to which I had before. Now the training I'd had before and the group management skills and all those bits and pieces are what really helped me to get this job and made me um, employable there. You know, I started to expand my horizons a little bit in terms of my qualification set and things like that, which allowed me to become a, 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 a valued asset there. Um, they, they saw me as an asset to employ and pay money to go and work out in a beautiful holiday resort. Um, the holiday side of things is a little bit different. The clientele are very different. The customer service level expected is extremely high. Um, you would constantly be working to please the guests. Um, my main role was beach staff. So, for example, if I was working the beach, my job would be to um, rig boats for people when they came down to the beach. They'd simply ask for a boat and we'd get it off the rack, rig it for them, help them into it, push them off, help them with anything they needed, catch the boat when they arrived back, de-rig it for them. All they'd have to do is hop off and, and go to the bar. So um, 
the other job there was um, RA sailing and windsurfing courses, which were real pleasure to do. It was really lovely to go out with the guests and teach them. And it was very much an in-boat tuition base. So quite often you think of a water sports instructor sat in a motorboat near, near a load of uh, people sailing around or paddling around or rowing around. Well, actually, this was very much done from inside a sailing boat. So even single-handed courses were taught from a sailing boat, which was really, really useful. Um, safety boat was a big one. So because we were everyone was teaching from boats, we had a lot of safety boats out and their sole job was to, to act as safety boat and deal with any issues. And as I mentioned, customer care was a big deal. Now, the reason this, this was a really important place for me is it added to my skill set pushed me as an instructor um, and started to develop me towards the higher level qualifications. It started that real, started to build that experience towards what was, what, well, the dream at the time, which was to become an RYA senior instructor and build up my windsurfing instructor and my powerboat instructor. So this place was a, a really, really important step on that, on that journey. Um, and I thought I'd fallen in love with the place. I really did. I, I wanted to work there forever when I was there. Um, however, Things had to come to come to an end one day, and eventually, I ended up working at this place, which is a place called uh, Cowshaw Activity Centre. And this was back on the sea in the Solent, in the, near Southampton, on the south coast. And this here was again similar to Grafham Water, um, whereby actually working there was very much school groups. Um, there was a lot of individual groups. Um, coming in for different water sports courses or climbing courses or skiing courses or um, track cycling courses and things like that. But the, the my, my main role was teaching sailing courses and, uh, and sort of developing the water sports side of things. Now, whilst I was there, I got to work under some very, very experienced people. Um, and when, uh, when I was working there, I had a really big opportunity to develop and push my skills. Working for Calshot, which was a Hampshire County Council run centre, um, they really pushed um, you to drive your qualifications forward. So whilst I was here, I, I did achieve my dream of becoming a senior instructor. Um, I also became a, water, uh, a windsurf instructor, a powerboat instructor, a kayak instructor. Um, you know, all these things were there, and these were all paid for by the people I was working for. Um, they they trained me up, and it was in their interest to for me to gain these qualifications. But all the time, everything I did was adding to that skill set to be an instructor and really sort of drive my my passion forward. Um, the big position that I got to hold there was water director, which meant you got rotated on as the person in charge of water sports um, for the day, duty manager, if you like. And that was my first taste of really being responsible for something. So I, no, I, instead of having someone to turn to to help, I was that person that people turned to for help. Um, and that it was quite a scary prospect at first, uh, but eventually you get used to it. Um, and you get you get your confidence levels up, which uh, we'll look at in a bit. The confidence side is a huge part of what we do, um, and the 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 whole whole uh, whole experience working at Cowshot was fantastic. Um, and I I rate it very highly. And, and being able to work under such experienced coaches really really did help me with my career. However, the day did come when I got a phone call and was asked if I'd like to apply for a job back at the school I went to. So here we go. That's back. You'll not recognize the badge um, where actually the I got offered the job of head of outdoor pursuits at that role at that school where actually I found it as a very, very privileged position to be in. My, my role there was quite a step up in that it was, a, it was a department manager role. So here, not only was it about teaching, my career had moved on. It was not about teaching, but it was also about managing a busy department. So that also brings in things such as um, looking after the administration of the center, the risk assessment. So making sure the paperwork's in place that allow the students to go on the water. Um, the finance and budgeting of things, the main, making sure that we can afford to fix the boats as well as run the boats and fuel the boats and all the time and making sure all our venues were paid for and we had enough revenue and things like that. So it was a, uh, this is where I got first introduced to a desk and uh, the, the desk became part of my job. Um, however, with that desk came some very privileged positions and we're at Kim Bolton, I was very privileged to work with some rep, not just teaching beginners and, and things like that and after school clubs and during their sports lessons. What I got to do as well was work with some representative teams in marathon kayaking and sailing. Um, now the sailing team were fantastic. They used to, we used to go and do team racing events and national regattas and things like that. However, the one I would draw on is the uh, marathon racing canoe team. And we're gonna look, I'll look a little bit at the devices to Westminster canoe race in a minute. 
the 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 privilege of this role the privilege of the the being an instructor is the trust you gain uh, from your students and the privileged position of being involved in their journey of development and you are a key part of that journey you are not the journey but you are a key part of that journey and the facilitator of that journey whether they be picking up sailing for the first time getting in a paddle in a getting in a, on a paddleboard for the first time or a kayak or even get, you know, going rowing for the first time you are in such a privileged position to be trusted to take them out of their comfort zone and push them and the the marathon canoe team is the one i dwell on here because this is the journey that i went on with uh, a group of about 12 teenagers each year um from never having paddled a racing kayak in their life to racing one of the most grueling um kayak events in in the world um and in terms of distance and endurance um the um place i was in there the seeing them pass under the bridge each year the finish line was utterly utterly fantastic but training those uh, representative teams were awesome this role as well also led me to other opportunities so uh, one of the things there is organizing abroad expeditions so an example of that is i spent a month in peru with 13 students uh, they raised the money to go themselves through fundraisers um through working through um you know trying to trying to sort of find ways to source you know selling things that kind of stuff um and they they uh, they all we all went to peru for a month uh, me and me and 13 kids and that involved trekking five days in the Colca canyon um we got to work in a, a school in a place called Cachacata in the sacred valley not far from a place called machu picchu uh, which is the inca um inca town on top of a hill um and we, we we got to spend a lot of time there working with the local school kids for a bit and also helping rebuild a kitchen that was wiped out and decimated by flooding um so you know a really amazing eye-opening trip also sightseeing rainforests animals that you've never seen before and probably probably never will again um you know meeting new people seeing new places um you know a fantastic opportunity and i got to be part of that journey and experience it for myself as well simply because of the industry i was in you know right place right time and i got to go and do this and another part of my job there was to be the subject matter expert for the cadet units um within the school um where i looked after and ran all their water sports and things like that and that was my first foray with working in the cadet environment you know you may notice that i've done a little bit of cadets as the story goes on but i don't come from a cadet background um and i must admit i'm amazed by it really am amazed by it so after this after this slide what i've got is a, a little look at devices to westminster so devices to westminster it, the race itself is and I, I bring this up here because it's a volunteer organization and i am the safety officer for devices to westminster which means i am a a a person responsible for the race uh, between the start line in devices and teddington lock in west london where the Thames becomes tidal and I hand over to a tideway crew. Um, but it's my job to get the race to there. So not only have I raced in it, I've run a team in it and coached and trained a team. But now a regular part of my year is 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 putting that orange bib on or jumping in a canoe, as you can see there, and, and sort of up, that's the safety um, on the on the tideway. My my last job on DW, other than to go and clap people in at the end, is uh, to see the start off safely on uh, date on the on the Easter Monday um, on the tideway in London. And make sure people go go off safely so that's uh the, the race itself though is it's 125 miles long um so as i said starts in devices in wiltshire um goes along the kennet and avon canal um and you have 77 portages now portages are where you get out and run around an obstacle in the river such as a lock a lot of you may may have seen locks on your your regular boating activities uh, so bits to where the river level changes you've got gates to to that allow you to the boats to rise and lift um well, on devices to Westminster, 77, you get out and you run around them, carrying the boat and your equipment. Um, as I said, starts in devices, Wiltshire, Kennet Avon Canal, and then it follows Thames from Reading um, all the way to the finish line in central London under Westminster Bridge. Okay, um, so that's that's there. What I'm going to do is slightly unshare my screen just to give you an idea of this race. Uh, the, the last team I coached uh, produced a little video, and I've asked them if I can use this today. Um, so I'm just going to change my screen slightly um if i can find it where is it that one i think um just as a short video just to give you a bit of an idea of what that is howard can you see that all right is that the 125 miles there? brilliant can you hear it 
Lost my heart and lost my soul Last time that you won't know Lost my mind and lost my goal mm, Not giving in just uh, undo that so hopefully that gave you a little bit of a uh, an idea of what uh what what that 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 event is all about and how um how it uh how, how big an event is but also the journey if you imagine that being all out paddling for um what the crews that they the normal crew time for that racing down it would have been anywhere between 18 hours solid to up to about 26 hours um of racing so that's uh, that's quite quite a feat so if you ever ever get the opportunity to take part in a marathon paddling event trust me it's 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 hard and it's worth a go but moving on um moving on that's enough about canoeing let's have a little look at um is it working oh why is that not working have you got my screen howard Oh, there we go. It's happening now. There we go. Um, after that, though, working at, at Kim Bolton, um, I decided it was time to head back to the sunny south coast. So I started working for Rockley Water Sports um, and my role evolved into the chief instructor position. So the chief instructor position within a centre is kind of um, 
quite a big step, you know, when you've been working, I was working as more of a senior instructor really at Kim Bolton um, and uh, the chief instructor. And the big transition here for me was whilst I was at Kim Bolton, I became the coach assessor that we spoke about earlier. Now, becoming a coach assessor is, or the sailing scheme trainer, as it is now called, the um, becoming a coach assessor is quite a, a big deal because you are now the person that is allowed to train the people that train students. So you, you basically qualify instructors. Um, and my large part of my role here was to, to do that, was to deliver that instructor training. So I did, got to deliver um, instructor training to anyone that booked in off the street. So they'd book a course and in they'd come. Um, specific courses for people around the world. So China in particular, I ran instructor training for their their instruct in it, uh, you know, people that were new instructors, um, and then a couple of years later, actually, we actually ran the senior instructor training for for that the, a, a similar group that came over from from China, where they were developed. The Royal Yachting Association, uh, the governing body, was developing things in China at the time, and uh, we were we were privileged to work alongside the RYA to deliver this this training, um, but also the development side of things as well and as you go up in this career as you move on your role becomes much more of a support and facilitator than it does uh, a frontline teacher um, and my job here at Rockley the chief instructor its main function was to support and develop the instructors who were delivering to the groups so the chief instructor was quite a quite a responsible position a very trustworthy position and likewise it has a desk unfortunately which you try and avoid like the plague but um you you do get to um do get to do things like rotoring um things like that so planning out activities making sure that there's enough equipment to go with each activity that you have got planned and all the courses that are booked in making sure you're putting the right people on the right courses with the right attitude and the right personality and the right qualifications so it's a real kind of juggle kind of job um so as you say management of all center operations now by that i've kind of given you a brief interlude but as it as had everything on this uh, this this job uh as you go up in the world of and can get your get higher level positions and things like that, that never stops as i said at the beginning it never stops you from being the entry level water sports instructor so you're always expected and always will have to do the same things you did on day one of your career be that you know teaching a beginner sailing course be that you know teaching people a, a fun taster session in kayaking or be that cleaning the sinks and unblocking the toilets that is um the nature of the industry we all chip in we all do what we have to do so management of all center operations is a nice way of saying well, you still have to put your hand down the drain sometimes okay staff staff training and mentoring as we've looked at because the, as we've mentioned as i've gone through the the jobs i've had those are the um things i've benefited benefited from massively so i have taken taken the opportunities where i can and i've had people mentor and develop me and as you go step up in the in the industry and you have more responsible positions it's your job more and more and more to back those people and to allow them to develop themselves so planning of activities and groups, which we looked at. So that's whether that be uh, a course of six people learning to sail or 180 kids coming in with the school and there's a multi-activity program going on. You're, you have to kind of juggle the lot. Um, staff planning. So knowing what staff you need, where and when, um, and when to bring staff in and when you don't need them, because otherwise it costs a lot of money. Um, and ensuring the readiness of all equipment. So that's making sure the maintenance is kept up to speed at all times. The kit is kept in good conditions. And most importantly, the instructors, when they break it, don't hide it. And they feel OK about telling you they've broken it. Um, so that when the next group goes to the, the, by the kayak or the, the paddleboard or, the, or the, the sailing boat, it's ready to go. It's not broken and ready to use. OK, planning and delivery of instructor training, um, as we've looked at, that, that was kind of a main, main part. And as you can see there, beautiful place. And in the sort of middle there, you've got a picture of me sort of, I don't know, that's, that's me actually at work. And, you know, I'm giving you the sort of heads up on the, these are the jobs, which is the nitty gritty. But essentially, it's all a laugh. You're having fun. All you're doing really, and this is what I tell people, is I've been paid most of my life 
to muck around in boats for a living. And it's been fantastic. It's just an awesome, awesome place to be. And as you can see as well, the, the picture there on the beach, that's us all playing volleyball with the, with the school groups. Just uh, one evening, it was a nice evening. So we all, we all decided to put on a volleyball competition. So uh, we did that and we, uh, this was us playing the teachers, which we, which we did win, I will have you know. And the other picture there, that's the instructor training side. That's an instructor course, which looks a bit more formal because um, it is. And we'll look at the instructor course a little bit more, but it's, that's what they tend to look like in terms of the dinghy instructor world. So moving on, that's where I am now. OK, so now this is where I've got to now, which is the Marine Society and Sea Cadets in the role of assistant head of inshore boating. OK, and this is a, a role that um, I, I gave up possibly my gene job to come and do. Um, you know, working at Rockley was absolutely outstanding. I had an amazing time. I worked with fantastic people in a beautiful, beautiful location. However, when this job came up, it came up with a much bigger sense of purpose and a much bigger um, outcome from your actions. Um, and that's what I found is a real important part of it. As I've mentioned the journey that you're part of with people. And this job here that I'm now part of, it, it's, 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 uh, it's a different role, very much different to water sports instruction, but that's what the instruction has led me to. Um, and my, my, one of my main jobs is to promote and develop boating across the Sea Cadet as a whole, you know, and to create the opportunity where possible um, to help units, to help hubs, to help boat stations where, where they need me to, um, to, um, to, to create those opportunities for cadets to get on the water. And not only for part of that is not just getting the cadets on the water, but we actually need the people to help them go on the water as well. So it's training those people as well and making sure they've got the equipment they need to do that. And we're fine, trying to find ways of, of making that work. So I look after the, the, the IBOS stuff. So the IBOS you may have heard of, you may have not, but that's all the safety systems and the rules that people have to follow when you go on the water. When you're jumping in the water and someone says you can't do that without a buoyant shade on, um, IBOS is why. And that's how we, we manage the risk levels within sailing because there is risk to everything we do. And when we allow, allow students on the water, we have to manage that risk and we have to have things in place to try and stop not necessarily stop people getting hurt. The aim is to stop them getting hurt. It won't always happen, but the uh, but we have to put things in place to reduce the impact of that. So the things like your buoyancy aid is part of what the IBOS system is about. You know, if you have to wear the right clothing to go on the water so you don't get cold, IBOS. You know, how many of you are allowed to go on the water at any given time? IBOS. So that's all the rules that the the staff have to follow um, to to put that. In. So when you when you're when you're having a go and saying, oh, why do I have to wear this? Um, that's my fault. So you can you can email me and, and whinge at me if you like, but uh, but give them a break because they're doing a great job. Now the uh, the other side of that is the assurance. Now that's just a posh way of saying making sure the rules are being followed, but also making sure the rules work. So they have to be able to work. If it, like, we can write stuff down, but if it doesn't work and it's not practical, that's no good. Um, coordinate instructor training nationally. So at your boat stations mainly, you'll see a lot of input put into instructor training and things like that. And it's my job to try and reach that instructor training out as far as I can and create the opportunities where I can. And we're incredibly lucky in Sea Cadets uh, where we have um, some incredibly highly qualified people involved with the, with, the, with the core, which means the opportunities for cadets are huge. Okay, are huge. And you've got to remember, if you go back to the beginning of this this uh, this webinar, that the the key is we all started at the beginning. We all started as an instructor in whatever we did. We all started falling out of a boat and getting wet and getting it wrong all the time and not being very good at it. That's where we all started, and they they've kept going, kept going, and they're still involved doing what they love doing, which is which is creating that opportunity for other people. And that is where we have people like uh, coach assessors, Howard's one of them. We've got uh, high level canoe uh, paddling qualified people that can train uh, instructors in paddling, uh, rowing, power boating, you know, all these things are p things that people are qualified in to help people become instructors. Um, and I can't stress enough, if you become an instructor in something, you have got a qualification, keep it in date, and you've got a qualification life and a potential career of a lot of fun. And we'll look at the sort of career side of it in a minute. Um, my other job is to coordinate the RS21 programme. Now, I've only just started. I'm here. I'm, a, I'm literally about a month and three quarters into my new job. Um, and my job, part of my job is to coordinate the RS21 programme. Now, sadly, I haven't been able to do much coordination of that because of COVID. However, watch this space. As soon as we can get those boats out and around the country for you to have a go in, then they will be coming, coming around. And there's the picture of them there just because... Well, not, not many people have seen lots of them, sadly, because COVID hit very quickly. But uh, they're amazing bits of kit and I, I can't I can't wait to get them out and about. Um, 
And the other part of, part of my job is to support, as I said, the units, hubs, which are the host unit boat stations, which is where some of you may be involved in a unit where a bit further away from water, so you go to another unit for that, and it's helped making sure that those units who accommodate that um, extra activity, they have got they've got the support they need to allow that support to happen. Um, and the boat stations, like I said, where needed in deliver, delivering the secret experience. I must admit though, the boat stations, they are staffed by some amazing people and they need very little in the way of, of what they're doing. They, they, uh, they you know, occasionally need, need bits and bobs, but they, they, you know, they're, they're great go-to guys and they, they will help you every step of the way. So if you've got one near you or you've got the local contact there, please use them, they're, they're awesome. So, and that's my job here. Um, and again, this, as I've said, I've got a desk. I'm sat at it now, coming to you live from the inshore boating office. But the uh, the score is it's uh, it's an amazing job because I get to use the skills and develop stuff I've learned throughout my career to help others get get the same impact I've had. All right. So that's kind of where I've got to in terms of my career. So how how did I? Uh, get there and what, why, why be a water sports instructor? So water sports instructor is, you can be a water sports instructor and loads of stuff. We'll have a little look at that in a minute. But the first one is it's fun, okay? Yeah, it's hard work. Yeah, sometimes it's cold and it's wet and it's raining and it's not so nice, but you're in it with a great bunch of like-minded people. You're in it with, um, you know, people that it's a very small industry. So you meet people and they, you tend to know them for the rest of your life um, and you know who they are. And at various times your lives cross over and it's great to see them. It's, it's like, you know, it's always a good catch up. Um, you're on the water, messing about in boats, doing something you love doing, um, getting paid for it as well i mean i won't admit i don't drive a ferrari you don't get paid an awful lot of money but you get paid enough and it is an amazing amount of fun travel like i said i worked in the mediterranean that was kind of where where i aim to go um but you know the, the the opportunities are endless all over excuse me all over europe is an opportunity you've got uh places like the Mediterranean where I was, Australia, uh, places in Africa, you've got um, America, um, New Zealand, there, literally there is opportunities everywhere for you to go and work and if you're qualified most of the governing bodies in this country are held in very high regard around the world um, so you know the, they are your skills are transferable straight across and actually if you ever think about moving to Australia or fancy fancy going traveling there for a little bit your skills are transferable into the Australian system they can change the sit so you can work in Australia either at a British registered center or as an Australian registered center they'll still accept the qualification and, and just train just do the the admin bit to get you get you sorted um, but yeah you, you can get around the world and get paid for it it's awesome um, life experiences okay so for my life if it wasn't for the career that I've had um, I wouldn't have the fun I've had I wouldn't have, have the, been able to pursue the, the hobbies I have. Um, I wouldn't have met my wife. I wouldn't have my family. I met my wife through this industry. Um, I wouldn't have the friends that I've built up over the time, you know, and I certainly, certainly wouldn't have had anywhere near as much fun. OK, it was awesome. My, my life so far has been amazing. I've, I've been really lucky um, and it, it has just given me such opportunities in life that I can't I can look back on and, and just smile about. And some of those experiences I've shared with you tonight. Um, and the other one is, is get you get paid. Um, you know, you do get a wage at the end of the week. And I must admit, in the start of the industry, at the start of it, when I was a, when I was 18 years old, going out, most of that money got spent on enjoying myself. Let's call it. Um, so after work, socialising with friends and things like that. You know, that's where that went. But you do get paid enough. Um, you know, I, I have a house, I have a mortgage, I have a family, um, and so you do get paid enough. It's not a career that um, it's highly paid, but it's paid well enough. And it does balance out with the amount of enjoyment you get out of it. Um, and that, that sort of leads on to that, uh, that sort of job satisfaction. So what is it you can get qualified in? Well, you can get qualified in sailing, windsurfing, power boating, canoe, kayak, stand up paddle board, water skiing, wakeboarding, foiling. So that's the big thing at the moment where you see the boats and boards and things flying out of the water, yachting, motor cruising, race coaching, kite surfing, rowing. There are loads of them. OK, loads of them. surfing. There are so many qualifications you can get. Um, and each, each qualification that has a real generic type of skill set, and that's the qualities of the person doing it. And most of you will be will have most of these already. OK, probably won't have all of them. Not all of us. I don't have all of these. Um, but, you know, if I just rattle through these really quickly. So knowledgeable. So what, knowledgeable is important because we need to know what we're talking about. We really do. You can't just be an instructor if you don't know what you're doing. So knowledgeable and skill set marry in together because I can't teach you to knit. 
the reason being is I can't knit. So whatever sport you use your passion, the water sport is your passion, you need to get involved, do it, yeah, become fluent in it so that you can you can demonstrate that and explain it to other people. Um, customer focus, so you're really always about the student, making sure they can get what they need. Um, approachable so they can talk to you. Uh, empathetic, fair, good communicator so you can get things across um, confidently as well, which is important listener so you can listen to their, their what they're struggling with and help them with what they're doing um fun you know positive adaptable and adaptable to your student the conditions you know if it's if it's a windy day if it's a the tide's running really fast or you know that that means you might have to change what you thought you were going to do or maybe your student isn't understanding you and it's never the student's fault it's up to you to change what you do to get them to understand what you're talking about so and help them so adaptable is a really really key skill of being an instructor and having that open mind of just saying well this isn't working let's try something else okay engaging is is, is a big one and then number one is being safe okay being safe everything we do has to be safe because if we are unsafe then obviously we're going to hurt people we're not going to get it right we're going to put them off the sport we're not going to make them enjoy it so safety is key Instructor training is part of that development of learning how to deliver safe sessions and how to get things across. Um, here's me running a course for a group of people uh, down at Rockley Point. Um, stood, if, you, if it helps, I had a welly full of water at this point. I remember it well. I'd gone in that little bit too deep. I wasn't wearing a wetsuit. I was wearing jeans and wellies underneath my waterproofs. Bad idea. And I got a welly full. But, you know, you have to keep smiling and we power on through it. But instructor training can seem a little bit formal, a bit regimented. Um, it's not because it's it's just a bit different in that when you train to be an instructor, you're learning to teach the skill set you already have. You're not learning the skill set. So there's a lot of theory and, and background around that and, and, and um, structures and things like that to learn for you to put into play. But when we're doing this, whoever's whatever sport it may be, be it sailing, paddling and all like that, the people running those courses are not trying to trip you up or trick you out. They're trying to help you develop as a person, as an instructor. So it's a professional course. You know, we've got to remember that. It's really important that we remember it's no longer with that course. We're showing the responsibility and things like that. We are grown up enough to to be responsible for, the, for a group of people. Um, the aim, though, is to have fun. You know, we want to have fun. We want to enjoy it. We're going sailing. It's, it's good fun. Um, development is continuous. OK, so at the start of the course, you're not an instructor. At the end of the course, you, you, hopefully you are a new instructor. I wouldn't say you're an experienced instructor. By the end of the course, you are a new instructor. So the aim is to get you to a point where you're ready to go into the world of instructing. Um, and it's a continuous development through. You will get things wrong. You won't get it right every time on a course. And that's the point. And the idea is, though, not to look at what, what was wrong. It's like, how do we change that to make it work? What are the things we need to take forward? Um, so it's always developing forwards. It's a group learning environment. So we learn from each other's mistakes and it's all about picking up each other and, and learning from what each other doing, looking at each other's styles and ways of doing things. Um, but you do also get your individual feedback. So as well, so you know that everything is your, your, what you need to work on specifically. Um, focuses on teaching the skill set, as I mentioned, um, and it is focused on you. OK, even though there might be six people, eight people on the course, you are the most important thing about your development. So that's what you are focusing on. And it's a continuous assessment. It's not about get, get it, get it, get it wrong, 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 and then right. It's about get it a bit wrong, get it right, get it better, or try something new, try that new, get that bit better. And as we go, we build, build, build and climb the ladder. And eventually we get to the line where we, we've got a good grasp of what we're doing. All right. And the coaches and, and, and um, educators and things like that, they will always, always be in it for you. They want you to succeed. They don't, they don't want to do it. And they will do everything they can to get you to where you want to be. Mistakes can be made. You can make mistakes. It's fine. And some courses uh, like the sailing, windsurfing, power boating, for example, they are moderated. So on the last day, you can expect to see someone else pop in on the course and their job is to say, hello, here's me. Here's some different ways to think about it a little bit. Here's a different style. But also their job is to make sure that the coach or the educator delivering the delivering the course is teaching what they're meant to be teaching and not just giving like trying to cut some shortcuts and things like that it's about uh, it's about sort of just checking the course is there and it's like a quality check on the course delivery system um but uh you know but their job as well for you it's just another day of the course all you've got to do is do your thing show that you've learned some stuff over the four days and take the next step um in learning and learn more on that day so that's that's all it is is, is about 
So national governing bodies are different things. So you know who to look up for if you need to. You've got the RYA, which is rowing, power boating, windsurf, or not rowing, sorry, sailing, power boating, and windsurfing, um, which uh, you know is is uh, they they look after and manage the schemes for. So all the certificated courses and things like that they are set by the RYA. British rowing is obviously the rowing side. British water ski and wakeboard, um, very self-explanatory. These um, they look after the water skiing and wakeboarding, and particularly the ski boat driving aspect, which is the safety aspect. If you fancy the bit of getting out abroad, driving the ski boat being a ski ski person you know getting a suntan in, a, in quite a flash mastercraft or something then that is uh, that's the sort of line you go down uh, but they are very hot on the safety so obviously you have a lot of people in the water and they're moving propellers and things like that so very very important british canoeing is the uh, oversight of all paddle sports now canoeing is a paddle canoe is a paddle sport but that canoe is the single ended paddle open boat style thing you've got kayaking you've got stand up paddle boarding you've got the different disciplines of touring racing sprint racing marathon racing wild water racing white water paddling slalom freestyle there's a huge world of paddle sports um, and british canoeing look after all that and bksa is the british kite sports association okay so now they look after kite surfing and things like that uh the the you know and the kite kite uh what's the kite boating is is a new one where you've got a, a small boat and you're wedging the boat with a kite and it, it zooms off but that's that's all there anything with a kite is uh is looked after by them although there is crossover there with the rya uh, where they do have a little bit of both. So the big one is when you're thinking about, oh, what should I focus on? I want to be a water sports instructor. I quite fancy getting paid to travel, enjoy myself, sit in sunshine, work on beautiful beaches all around the world. Um, what what qualifications should I get? So any national governing body qualification is worthwhile, uh, worthwhile getting. They do take you to different places. Paddlers tend to aim towards mountains a little bit more. Sailors tend to aim towards and wind surfers and things like that tend to aim towards beaches and things like that. Um, but actually, any NGB is worthwhile. Uh, national governing body qualification, um, and these are things that employers really do look for when they are looking to employ people. And there are lots and lots of jobs out there doing this, um, but they are looking for people with qualifications. Now, um, water sports employers often ask for two. Um, of these or more. However, if you only have one, that's fine. I started on one. I had one dinghy instructor certificate and basically I got a job and I got going and I, I off I went. And quite often you will still get a job with one, um, but you'll have maybe less pick of, of the jobs and things like that. But, um, but they often ask for two or more, but if you've got one, apply anyway. There's a really good chance you're going to get, you're going to get that job. Okay. Sorry, excuse me. Um, experience always backs up qualifications. So the more experience you can get, not necessarily as an instructor even, but now when you're going out boating, the more boating you can get in, the more experience is going to back up your instructor certificate, the better instructor you're going to be. So you can say, like, oh, I've qualified an instructor last year, but I have been, I've been canoeing for, for, for six years at cadets and I've done this, 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 and I've learned this and achieved these proficiencies. And you, you will, that will look huge on your CV to an employer. Dinghy and windsurf instructors are often needed in sail, sail sports environments. They are um, very much, uh, very much needed and quite often quite hard to come by and especially last minute. So they are always, always needed. Um, and if you've got a bit of, bit of experience in both so they can use you to teach one and train you up in another, that's always a good one as well. Um, Paddle sports, however, is one of the fastest growing sports at present. Stand up paddle boarding has exploded as a sport um, because of its accessibility, its ease. It's, you know, it's fairly, fairly uh, low level to get a lot of enjoyment out of it. You know, you can take it up to very high levels of skill, but you don't have to be, you know, the next uh, the next number one in the world to be able to do get on a paddle board and, and do it. Um, so, you know, it's one of the fastest growing sports at present and quite often a combination of sail and power instructor qualifications is a really, really strong CV. It's a very, very strong, strong, uh, strong skill set and employers jump at that. If you ever have the opportunity to develop a bit of both, that's really, really good idea. Use your time in cadets. And this is a big one. If you, you know, in cadets, you are in one of the best organizations to develop your skills you've got people who want you to do well they want to help you get better they want to create the opportunities and people are are putting time in they are you know investing heavily with the with the unit equipment and things like that so that you guys can get the most experience possible um so you have got such an amazing world in secret and as i said i've been here for about a month and three quarters and i am blown 
away by the organization and i've worked in very very sort of um meticulous and very strong suited uh, commercial world before this and honestly i've seen nothing like this it's unbelievable the opportunities that are offered so really really use it to to give it the head start it can give you really really do um so not long to go guys so um site specific qualifications are the uh are the, the other side of this and we've spoken about ngvs but site specific are where an employer may train you up to teach things to a taste session level so low level but maximum enjoyment lots of splashing and dashing but not necessarily teaching them the more technical side of sports um but they may qualify you in uh, site specific stuff and they're really useful things to do so if you have the opportunity to do that with an employer really good idea because it makes you more useful to them and it builds up experience at a basic level which then allows you to train up more so it gives you more knowledge and experience low down and therefore you've got a better foundation from which to become an instructor in that sport so keeping current really important one okay so we've got at the moment where we might not be a water sports instructor we're working at that competency level at the bottom all right so we are looking to develop our skill set become competent at something all right um when we are competent at it we can then teach it so we need to know what we're talking about we need to understand what we're talking about we need to understand why we bring a powerboat in that way why we hold a windsurf sail in a certain way how we turn a windsurf or why when we lean the rig forward does it turn downwind where's the wind coming from how do you tell all these kind of things need to be a little bit second nature so you need to put the time in to develop that competency level once you're at a good standard you can then go for certification okay where certification comes under a lot of things so you've got your your competency level being good so you've probably got a few certificates there telling you you've achieved this skill level however there's other bits that need to go into place to get become an instructor so quite often you'll need to do an element of child protection training for example or vulnerable adults so that we can spot um, and make ourselves aware and, and our understanding of the needs and um, needs and potential um, things that we might have to deal with if uh, as we look after people in our in the line of our work uh, first aid is a big one most well all instructor qualifications are based on a first aid certificate without a valid first in date first aid certificate then no instructor qual uh, qualification is actually even valid even if you hold it in your hand you need a first aid certificate to back it up and the first aid is rolling on a, on a three-year basis um, certain ones like the sales sports ones all require powerboat uh, qualifications so that you can drive a powerboat in what you're doing uh, paddling you need to have something like the called the fsrt which is the foundation safety and rescue training did i get that right the um the foundation safety and rescue training they go i've got i've got the certificate i should know um but the um they they that is one that you need to do, which enables you to rescue other people from your kayak from a canoe from a paddleboard so that you know if something goes wrong or someone capsizes or someone gets stuck on a twig or something like that you can go and affect a rescue on them and keep them safe okay so they're the kind of uh, prerequisites as well and at sea cadets obviously we've got the the swimming test that we have to get done we've got you know all the little bits that we have to do and, and your instructors have to make sure these are all in place and your instructors have to have other things as well criminal records checks all these kind of things that make sure that you as cadets are kept safe in a safe environment to be able to flourish and, and take part in in these amazing activities that are always on offer currency is all about keeping it current so once you qualify it's keep doing it yeah you know, don't stop okay the it's quite easy to form of i've got my instructors you know i don't have to go sailing i don't have to go canoeing actually if you don't your skill set will fade so you need to keep yourself current enjoy it go out there spend the time paddling down a river and having a picnic you know spend your time um spend your time on the water with friends mucking around splashing them and having a laugh but actually doing the sports you love doing because that's going to keep you current also keeping yourself furthered in training so lots of these sports you start off at a basic level instructor and you've got different runs and it depends on what sport you're involved in and what your your niche is but you've got different runs as you go up and if you keep doing that keep pushing yourself and keep developing yourself you keep yourself fresh you keep yourself in the game you keep yourself able to to drive yourself forward and keeping your skill level developing which enables you then to be a far better instructor not only in terms of your delivery but also in terms of your employability because you are higher qualified so you're in much higher demand um, so that's that one and the last one there is first aid so i've mentioned first aid a little bit it's important you have the right first aid certificate you know it's it's, it's some certificates aren't aren't, aren't uh, there but your national governing body of the sport in which you become qualified and will will be able to give you the uh the lowdown on the best ones for them and um, the water sports ones tend to need to involve cold water shock 
which is something that happens when you fall into cold water and you struggle with your breathing, get fatigued and, and can cause problems. And also hypothermia, which is where we've been doing, where we work in cold environments, cold water again. Um, and we can, hypothermia can be a bit of an issue. So we need to be made aware of that and uh, how to prevent it, how to spot the early signs of it so we can stop it becoming a problem. Um, so those are the things that are usually involved in, in the first aid qualifications required for a water sports instructor. Okay. So I've uh, probably probably rattled on far enough there. Um, obviously, it's a bit of a wide and varied role. Um, now, I know a lot of you have got sort of specific interests in water sports and routes there. So really happy to, to field any, any questions there. Before I do, um, you're welcome to get in touch if you want advice or any help on getting going down the line of uh, any any. Um, uh, water sports career or want some advice on companies or how to apply or want to be put in touch with maybe who, who, where do you go for jobs what sites so who, who do you get in contact with because you want to work for a set company um, do get in touch do get in touch if I don't know I will be able to find out and I'll do everything I can to, to help you on that journey because it's an amazing world and it's an awesome awesome place to be and I must admit I, if I could do it all again I wouldn't change a thing I've loved every second so please please if you're ever thinking about it do do try it it's well worth it so any, any questions, Howard? Well, thank you, Tom. Uh, we didn't have any questions during that, but uh, if people want to uh, put questions into the chat, I can pass them on. So we'll give it a little time, Tom. Thank you. There was lots of stuff there that I learned about you that I didn't know. <laughs> There you go. There you go. There's no skeletons in the cupboard, but they, you know, they, yeah, there's, <laughs> yeah, there's a few strings to the bone, you know, and the big, the big one is, you know, Christ, nothing, nothing goes perfect every time, does it as instructors? So, you know, that, that, that making, not. making mistakes and learning from those mistakes has been one of the, the pivotal parts of my career it really has. So guys, if you have got any questions, please fire away. Okay, we have a question from Leading Cadet Kalika. Can we do stand-up paddle boarding in Sea Cadets? Yes, you can. You can. So the Sea Cadet module, there's uh, two, two, uh, two governing bodies, really, that look after Sea Cadets. There's B-Super, which is a commercial governing body. It's kind of a, it's not necessarily a government endorsed one but they do do a lot of high high level stuff and there's the british canoeing side of stuff sea cadets because it follows a gov uh, the, the the sort of top level governing bodies we we are british canoeing um orientated so we uh follow the british canoeing qualification i think that's the way it's really that's going to become the sort of top level they're kind of level pegging in the industry at the moment but british canoeing will will do that because it's attached to so much more um there are paddle boards. Paddle boarding is coming and they have been, they are on their way out to places. I think, have you got some at Midlands Boat Station yet, Howard? No, mine no, haven't turned up yet. They are, they are coming. They are coming. So it's a bit of a new thing for Sea Cadets, but they're coming and it's going to be brilliant. It really is. Um, but you can qualify as an instructor. If you're a paddle sports instructor already, you can just do a conversion as well. So you can convert your add, or add on to your certificate a supping module and that's uh, that's how you can become a, a stand-up paddleboard instructor really easy and uh some, it's, it's an amazing thing it's great great sport so they are coming they are coming i am reliably informed by my by my boss the head of inshore boating you can guess that from the title because you're being the boss um the, the they are they are on their way so yes you will be able to do stand-up paddleboarding in sea cadets okay uh we have one more uh, another question from uh stephanie horsfield uh, I am a new CI in Sea Cadets, uh, instructor, looking to get some teaching quals. How will you support? I am coastal skipper, but want to get inshore boating trained. Um, so it's looking looking to sort of move into the smaller boat stuff. So that is definitely something we can support you with. I'd suggest that we talk individual circumstances. Depends on what you've done before, what qualifications you're looking to seek, what uh, what things it is you're looking to qualify in. The initial part is to make sure we've got the experience at the right level in the in those in whatever it is you're training in, be it sailing, windsurfing, power boating. Um, paddling whatever it may be i'm guessing with the the qualification of the sailing is quite an interest as well um but um you know the, the idea being is get that skill level up and but the the first step is to speak to the unit uh, as a whole to say look this is what i want to do this is how and this is how it kind of steps up they will then talk to their district and area and that was where you can um 
you'll get the support coming through from inshore boating um we'll come through that and there are courses available to you um all around the country uh all around the country there are courses coming and i've literally emailed the area staff officers today with the provision of sailing and windsurfing courses that might be available on top of what we already offer at the boat stations which is there is a, a huge amount of training um for for the the adult instructors and and, and cis that are are, is there is literally to develop it through training spotlights so there is very much um, opportunities to do that the initial thing is to start at your unit and talk to those units or you know or talk to your area staff district staff um, depending on where you fit into the organization I'm not sure where you fit into the organization so um, talk to the, that 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 line um, and obviously if you know they should then direct it up to that the the the, the level that organises it, and that's where the support comes in. Also, you've got the courses advertised on the boat stations. Um, but if you're not finding what you want, and you're not um, you're not get finding that it's it's it's, it's as accessible as, as you'd hope, that's that's uh, the nature of the beast. That's what we want to know about. Um, please get in touch with me. Please get in touch with me. One of my jobs is to coordinate that instructor training and make sure we've got the adequate provision around the country. So if we're not not there, I'd like to know. So please do get in touch, and I'll make sure you get what you need. I'd like to add, Stephanie, that uh, I, uh, you could uh, badger your training officer at the uh, the unit that you volunteer at, and um, ask them to keep tabs on courses that are posted on Westminster. I also, you may be able to um, register for the Seeker portal. Um, where that will give you all the information on the live courses that are on Westminster and the course codes, and that will give you quick access to uh, register interest with those courses. But certainly, uh, first instance is regional boat stations are going to give you uh, relatively quick and easy access to further qualifications. So I hope you've had a pretty good comprehensive answer from both me and Tom. Oh, so um, do, get, do get in touch if you need to and if you're not finding what you want just email me or or give us a call at initial boating and we will do everything we can to help you we definitely want to support that so a question from gallagher are cadets limited to attend boat stations local to their unit um currently we are not able to do any residential trips so we can't we can't do that at the moment so at the moment it is really trying to make sure that we can get you to get get stuff to um to your to stuff locally for you to, to 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 train and give you that opportunity and make sure we are still doing what we'd normally do but create slightly differently so that there's access to it um normally no you are not limited to your boat station locally you can you can across the charity if you want to come down to where, where i'm sat right now in weymouth you, you can do that and um, there are courses available uh, for you to do that um it's just a case of looking for those courses at the moment it's a bit covid world still so we haven't quite got ourselves up to where the dream is you know where we'd love to go back to where we were but we're not there yet in terms of the regulations we have to follow um, and it's slightly different to the sport world in that we fall under youth services as opposed to british sport so we, we're slightly different in terms of our our um our, our ruling however because of that what we're doing is we are desperately trying to create opportunity through active programs um locally to which are getting you out the opportunity to get on the water but over the summer as well we're hoping to get courses of instruction at local venues um so that there is access why we can do that and as soon as we can open up again and get going again believe me we will yeah, I'd just like to add to that. There is actually, um, I think, a 90-minute travel window for cadets and staff to travel to venues to do activities. So um, that is the current COVID guidance from headquarters. Um, so uh, like Tom says, as soon as that's lifted, uh, you'll be able to attend uh, boat stations that are further away uh, and then hopefully going into the into the new year we'll be back to residentials so fingers there crossed. we go fingers crossed that'd be amazing fingers crossed. Trust me, we won't be sitting on that for very long as soon as we're told give give me enough time to type it and it will be out there as a regulation so it's um yeah it, it we won't sit on that long as soon as we're allowed to open it all up we will open it all up oh uh, right is there any more questions Okay, so um, if there are any more questions, please use Tom's 
email address. Don't question me. <laughs> you can deal with all the emails, Tom. Uh, no please problem. do feel free. We're we're all here to help you. Um, and I will say, uh, I'll reiterate, register for the cadet portal. That will give you access to courses relatively uh, straightforward uh, for each of the boat stations or nationally um, for your... Uh, It'll give you everything open to you in your area. You know, yeah. so if it's a national course that you can get on somewhere else, it will still advertise to you, but also all the stuff in your area will be there as well. It's it's really important you do because this is instead of having to get your 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 unit stuff to trawl through the Westminster to show show you what's on, you can see that straight up live that you don't have to ask me, you can see what's on and say, I want to go on that one. So please do, please, please do. Okay. If nobody has any questions, thanks, Tom. Uh You're very you've been brilliant. Uh Brilliant, diverse career, uh, and I'm extremely happy that you're working with us. Um, oh, very kind of you to say. No, I am. I think you're going to be a real asset to the to the organisation. Well, I hope so. I hope so. So far, it's been amazing, and I, I, I can't stress enough how blown away I am by the whole organisation, whether it be a cadet taking part and the type, yeah, you know, just who they are and what they're about, um, to the people that are volunteering with them, to the the staff involved in the in, in the MSSC. It's just it, every step of the way has been fantastic. So uh, you know, it's just lovely to be here, and it's very kind of you to say thank you very much. Okay, guys, take care. Hopefully, see you somewhere soon.